Hey everyone, it's Tim from Linosa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. Have you ever seen tags on sheep or goats that you purchase? Um, and have you ever wondered why exactly do they tag them? Well, sometimes, well actually a lot of times, this tagging process has to do with the Scrapey Eradication Program. Scrapey is a huge deal and it's one of the oldest diseases we know about that affects sheep and goats. If you don't know about Scrapey, you're going to want to stay tuned to find out more. All right, so if you've seen a tag before, you may have seen tags in many different fashions and many different sizes, but if you look at any of the tags that your animals have, you can see right there you get a symbol that says U.S. inside of it, and then you usually have a state acronym followed by a series of numbers. Well, here on Lanessa Farms, our scrapey ID tag is this. I-N-37-08-1. So if you happen to see this number on any tag, that tag belongs specifically to Lanessa Farms. The I-N stands for Indiana. And then we have a number that's assigned to it. Uh, very well, you could see, you know, any other state. You could see an IL or an MN or any other state in the union for that matter. And this number represents the Scrapey Identification and Eradication Program set up by the USDA. So what exactly is Scrapey? Well, Scrapey is a degenerative disease caused by prions. And a prion isn't a bacteria and it's not a virus. It's actually a bad protein. Um, proteins in your body are strings of amino acids that are put together and they fold up in a very specific way and that folding makes up a protein. Um, they're supposed to be folded a very specific way. And what a prion is, is prion is a bad protein that's got manipulated to where it's not folded correctly. And that protein, when it comes in contact with other proteins, causes them to change their structure as well. And then it creates this out of control process that actually causes these bad proteins and leads to degenerative symptoms such as uh, brain disease and other things, neurological symptoms that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. So these prions, this affects lots of different animals. It affects sheep and goats. When it affects sheep and goats, uh, we refer to it as scrapey, which is what we're talking about today. In cattle, you've heard of this before because this is mad cow disease. Now in humans, humans can be affected by these prions as well. Um, it can have two different forms primarily in regard to the mad cow disease. Uh, the first one is actually, uh, we think humans can get it from mad cow disease. And this is a variant of what's called creutzfeldt jakob disease. Um, and then there's a genetic variance for this creutzfeldt jakob alone. What is the relationship between all three of these? Well, we don't really know for sure and there's not a whole lot that's known about these prions. Uh, we do know that this is one of the oldest known diseases of sheep and goats. There's literature that tells us about it all the way back into the 1700s. Now, sheep and goats have scrapey, cattle have mad cow. We think, although we don't know, that cattle originally got mad cow disease from bone meal that was um, basically pulverized, made of sheep and goat bone, and fed to cattle. Cattle got mad cow disease, and then a variant of the mad cow disease affected humans, causing this variant of creutzfeldt jakob disease. That basically is kind of the down and dirty history of scrapie itself. All right, so continuing on talking about the scrapie, we talked about how we get one bad protein and that folding kind of gets mismatched. And then what happens is, is every other protein that it comes into contact with essentially picks up this bad folding and it just runs rampant and it gets out of control. It takes about two to five years, generally speaking, for the onset to occur. That is to say the animal can have it, carry it for two to five years, and by the time the symptoms start to manifest themselves, uh, you normally have you know, less than 13 months 
uh, from onset of symptoms until the animal actually dies. And in many cases, it's much, much less than that. It's important to understand that the animal's not actually born with scrapie. Uh, it's born with a genetic propensity to become infected with scrapie, which is what we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Again, scrapie itself causes brain damage. So this, this protein abnormality eventually leads to brain damage. That scraping, which is where the name comes from, uh, scraping, itching, they're gonna rub on things. They're, it causes an, an itchiness, an uncontrollable itchiness in the skin, uh, which will eventually lead to wool loss and hair loss where the animals are continually scraping their hair off. Now there's lots of different things that can cause hair and wool loss. So don't just assume because you have one thing, it means that you know one of these symptoms means that your animals have it. That's not necessarily the case. Uh, an abnormal lip smacking, a kind of a that you'll see them doing, uh, and then a blindness that will occur as well. Eventually the animal will start to convulse, it will go completely comatose, and it will die. Again, two to five year onset, once it starts, 13 months, but usually much less than that before it actually kills them. So, we said that they're not born with it, um, so how exactly do they get it, and how do we know if an animal has a propensity to develop it? All right, so we said that the animal isn't born with scrapie, but we know if they're set up to potentially become infected with it. Well, you know, scrapie, these prions, they're very, very hard to kill. Uh, they've been shown to live in soil for many, many, many years. Uh, so it can live in soil, it can live in bodily fluids, it can be carried by mites. It's occurred spontaneously to where they don't even know how in the world it came to be. Um, but there is a way to prevent it. And this is what a majority of the major producers do. And this is where these scrapie ID tags come into play. And you'll hear uh, lots of verbiage about like Q and R and all these different things when you're buying sheep or goats. And what that's telling you is if they come into contact with it, what are the chances that they're actually going to develop it? Well, what scientists realized years ago is there's a specific spot in the DNA of the sheep or goats called a codon that tells us if the animal is susceptible to develop scrapie or not. So in your DNA, you have all these different base pairs, which is represented by these lines. And I'm not gonna get in the deep weeds of it, but essentially three of the base pairs make up a codon. And in sheep and goats, there's this area called uh, identified by the, the segment, which is number 171, codon 171, which is a series of these three base pairs. And this makes what's called an allele. These three base pairs make what's called an allele. If you haven't watched our video on genetics and basic genetics, you would be uh, helped greatly by checking it out right here. Essentially, this allele helps us to determine if they're susceptible or not. So an animal can have one of three variants that this allele represents. It can be Q, Q, R, R, or Q, R, or a variant of that, R, Q. Okay, Q means they're susceptible to it. R is easy to remember because you remember R is resistant. So when we start talking about our Punnett square, which we talked about in our previous videos, you could have multiple different options. So mom could have something like this, dad could have something like this. If you get an animal that is QQ, this means they have no resistance whatsoever. If they come into contact with scrapie, they are going to get it. And this is why we want to stay away from animals that carry the Q and especially animals that are QQ. So a lot of times when you go to purchase an animal, a provider will tell you, especially males, the provider will tell you they're QQ, they're QR, they're RR. RR is the best that you can get. Because if we breed two animals together and we know that our ram is RR, this is the benefit of having a ram that is RR. If you have a ram that is RR, all of your animals will be resistant to it. So let's say we have a U that is QQ, but we have a ram that is RR. 
as you can see, every time you're going to end up with that resistance, that baby is going to be a carrier of resistance. Ideally, a lot of closed flocks strive to have RR only. When people get into trouble is when they breed, they have a QQ ram. They have a QQ ram breeding it on even an RR female. And then what ends up happening is they have an offspring that it's gonna have a Q no matter what. And then they breed fathers to daughters and they end up having cases where they most definitely can end up having scrapey show its ugly head in their flock. So this is why when you talk to breeders and they sell you breeding rams um, or even breeding ewes and they talk about if it carries that QRR, you always re want to remember R equals resistance and the gold standard that we want to strive for is to have our, our uh, rams. That is the absolute best thing that you can do. Now, how do you test for this? There's multiple um, places out there that'll do testing for you for relatively inexpensive. If you have a ram on your farm and you don't know if he's a carrier or not, you can take a simple blood test or a tissue sample, mail it in for a few bucks and they will actually tell you if your ram is QQ, QR, or RR. Again, gold standard is we want to have the RR. All right, so why tag? Why use the USDA Scrapey Identification and Eradication Program tags? Well, obviously, as you can see, if you were to have an outbreak it, and you have susceptible animals, it can be devastating and there's no cure for it. Um, so that's a huge problem. Uh, the Scrapey Eradication Program in the United States is headed up by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Um, you can join, you can get a farm ID, it's 100% free. And in most cases, they'll even provide you with some tags and a tab, tag applicator for free. Check out the description below to read more about that. Um, the benefit of this is tracking for outbreaks. So if there were an outbreak or if they were able to track, uh, track down an animal that actually had scrapey, and they could look at them, they could look at the tag ID number on the animal, and they could say, okay, we know which farm this came from, and they could track it down and hopefully eradicate it before more animals are infected. Again, it's free. Sales and shows, in many cases, if you're gonna be participating in sales, especially uh, sale barns, things like that, traveling across state lines, if you're gonna be going to shows, uh, such as possibly county fairs, many state fairs, national shows, things of that nature. Both of those are going to require that you actually have a scrapey ID tag available and in the animal. So if you're not on board yet with the scrapey identification and eradication program, and uh, you are either thinking about raising sheep or goats, or you're currently raising sheep and goats, this is definitely something that you're going to want to get on board with now instead of later. Currently, the United States and Canada both have uh, scrapey cases that are there. Um, I believe the UK has it as well. Um, New Zealand and Australia currently, I, I will have to fact check this one, but I'm, uh, I'm like 99% sure that they've never actually had a confirmed case of scrapey in New Zealand or Australia. Um, but people are extremely cautious and extremely careful about this. There's been multiple times throughout history where we thought we got rid of this and then something happened and it popped up again. Um, as a matter of fact, early on uh, in the 1920s, I believe, and in the 1950s, vaccines that were made and actually had some cerebral spinal fluid in them or some brain matter in them actually caused massive outbreaks because essentially they infected all of the animals uh, with scrapie. Uh, I've been asked questions before as far as um, are some animals more susceptible than others. Um, there's some disagreement upon this. Uh, it's been said that some blackface sheep have a little bit more of a propensity to develop this um, and there was a few other breeds but the reality is again if you get tested that is the key. Uh, get tested get that ram tested and try if you're buying to make sure that you buy RR rams. 
uh, at very minimum, make sure you buy a QR RAM. So that's it. That's some heavy duty uh, information. I know a little bit more in depth than we normally like to go, but I think it's an important topic for people to understand. So with that being said, I'm Tim from Lanasa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again, and I look forward to seeing you next time.